Every day we hear tragic numbers in the news, numbers that make us feel helpless. The death toll could rise as high as 100,000. 45,000 to 50,000 people were killed. 13 million are facing severe hunger. 12 million people need emergency aid. Heavy monsoon rains have affected at least 5 million people across the country. 3 million people may have been affected by the quake. But what do these numbers really mean? They are often so big they don't feel real. But they are real. And these big numbers are made up of individual stories and individual lives. This is the story of one number, one life, and one extraordinary boy named Joseph. This is also the story of a humanitarian and environmental scandal that could have been avoided. The death toll from a cholera outbreak in Haiti passed 200 tonight, and thousands more are sick. Patients overwhelmed a hospital in the port city of St. Mark's seeking treatment. The source of the outbreak is not yet confirmed. I raced this guy up here and he just died now. As I came to the gate, they told him no. Reports of new cases are emerging in towns 50 miles from the outbreak zone. Some reports say victims have died in as little as four hours. Health workers are rushing medication, clean water, and hygiene supplies to the affected region. This outbreak is likely to uh, get much larger. Tens of thousands of survivors of the devastating earthquake are vulnerable. They're still living in crowded tent cities in and around Port-au-Prince with poor sanitation and little access to clean drinking water. I love my life. In the afternoon, I play baseball. In the morning, I go to school and photo print. This is my house, and this is my garden, and this is where we live after the earthquake because our uh, home was fell down. This is my father. And this is my last sister Cindy. This is my sister Lovey. And this is my brother Pasta. And this is my sister Geda. This is my mom. She makes beautiful jelly to spare her family. Time we cook here, we make some food here. That is some, some, some kitchen for us. And this is our bathroom. So. Hey, look, this is my baseball ball, and this is my favorite thing. I got this when I went to Toronto, I love it.
I wear this in my house because I love my life. We have these posters. They teach you how to then get cholera. Watch your hand. Drink clean water. Watch all the thing before it. Put the purple on Latin only. Sometimes this one make it very hot. A lot of stickers here. <laughs> A lot of mysticals. Eleven people live in this house with me. It's Haiti's nightmare scenario, an outbreak of deadly disease killing scores in a country already on its knees. Authorities say the symptoms, acute diarrhea, vomiting and dehydration, bear all the hallmarks of cholera. Her, her husband died last night and this is her daughter. We're just getting her on an IV and then we're, we're going to the community. You can imagine the desperation was because no one knew what this was. Everyone was saying that the river was poisonous. Don't go near the river. Something was coming upstream from upstream here and now it's reaching up results from what we can tell. Unlike HIV, which is a very slow killer, this was killing people instantly. Fear uh, existed, a lot of fear and anxiety around around the causes. The most kind of vivid memories are just everyone trying to find water and not wanting to, to drink the river water that was on the side. People were so desperate for getting clean water. It, 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 it got me, it really got me. And I think what got me the most was the fear. It started to rain, and that's when it really hit me. And I said, wow, we, you know, we're in for a long haul here, and we were just going to continue to see cases until we were able to identify what the cause was. Right from that initial night where we saw 400 patients and then the next day had over 1,000, that this couldn't just be your, your run-of-the-mill diarrhea, that it looked, you know, it had the, the telltale signs of cholera. If someone is with cholera is defecating and, and it somehow gets into a river system, it's easily able to then be transmitted quickly. The Artimony River is the largest river in Haiti, but it's also the red basket where most people are, are living off the land farming. They're not just drinking the water, they're bathing in the water, they're using it for their crops, they're bathing their animals in the water, they're, they might be even defecating in the water. And so it's, it's this vicious cycle. As the disease spreads from the town of St. Mark, cases are now being reported in the capital of Port-au-Prince. We built this field. We are the first little league in Haiti. And we get better every day. That's Jeff. That's Buki. That's crazy. That's Jaffney. Sometimes baseball is crazy. 
Sometimes it's hard, but we love it. We play in the sun, and we play in the wind. That's Jason. We chose it's our country. That she loved, he loved baseball. One day I went to play baseball in the major league. UN soldiers working furiously to contain what looks like a sewage spill at this base in Haiti's rural heartland. We came here after rumors that Nepalese troops could be a source for the cholera outbreak. The disease is waterborne and untreated waste running into a river is a big danger and that's exactly what we found. Well, we're not being told exactly what's going on here, but it certainly smells like sewage. There are toilets right there, and the liquid seems to be draining into this river just a few meters away that flows into the nearby town of Mirbalé. The Nepalese contingent wouldn't tell us when they arrived here, but UN headquarters confirmed it was mid-October, just weeks after a cholera outbreak in Kathmandu. A lawsuit's been filed on behalf of more than 5,000 Haitians against the United Nations over the cholera outbreak that has further devastated Haiti in the aftermath of the January 2010 earthquake. It's widely believed the cholera was brought to Haiti by a battalion of Nepalese troops with the UN peacekeeping force. The strain of cholera that hit that area is, is identical to a strain that was in Nepal, and Nepal had a, had a cholera outbreak in the summer of 2010. of the population sickened during the outbreak. It's believed Haiti now has the highest rate of cholera in the world. Brian Kincannon is one of the attorneys who filed the suit on behalf of Haitian cholera victims. Uh, we're, we're hoping that this is the case that's too big to fail, that the, the, the evidence against the United Nations is, is so overwhelming here that, that the UN will have no choice but to finally take responsibility for its malfeasance. <laughs> I'm now in Sema. I'm working with some a group of human rights to ask for justice and reparation for the victims of cholera. The victims who have been killed, the victims who have been injured. When we heard about the, 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 the breakout of the cholera, we make some investigation, we document that. We visit all sites, all uh, uh, area where the cholera, we got a break out of cholera. We looking with, for people who have been sick or killed by the cholera. We talk to them, to the family. It's the, he has his father was being killed on cholera. And then uh, when we make the file for people, he said the line is too long. He can wait. And now Adam, I'm, I give him the phone of our lawyers in Semak to come to him and make the file for him. We got tuberculosis, we got malaria, but we never have a, a, a cholera. But it's, it's evident that the minister or the Nepalese bring it. 
ready to the in a, this river. As anger over a horrific outbreak of cholera reaches boiling point, locals blame the UN troops like these Nepalese soldiers for the outbreak. Demonstrations have seen crowds take to the streets, using burning tires as roadblocks. In the northern port city of Cap Haitien, two people were killed when UN soldiers exchanged gunfire with protesters. Others have been hurt in similar shows of anger around the Caribbean island. The thought that the very foreign visitors who were supposed to be helping Haitians may have brought this affliction to the island is almost too painful to contemplate. In Cape Haitian, we are in the country. We got the resistance of people who, who, asked, who asked the minister to out the country. <laughs> Abba is against. When you say Abba, Abba you, I'm against you. Abba ministers mean against minister. Minister brought us cholera. He never bought the peace in Haiti because a peacekeeper, they don't bring the peace. There's been slow funding for cholera treatment. There has not been slow funding for peacekeeping. Uh, One-tenth of all UN peacekeepers are in Haiti. They, their budget for this year is $800 million, and that's for a country that has not had a war in, in my lifetime but does have a cholera epidemic. The United Nations have their own protocol how to respect the environment rights of any country they send the peacekeeper. But why they don't detect the cholera on the uh, Nepalese soldiers? Or how they don't treat the, 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 you know, the waste? They need to say, it's, um, it's my fault. Let's uh, help the Asian government to eradicate the cholera. And they continue to deny, and the, the disease continue to spread around the country. We need to say hey to the United Nations. You promote the human rights. Let's down the human rights in Haiti. Let's let the Haitian people to drink some potable water. Cholera came. Haiti have a lot of trouble. But other countries have trouble too. With tsunami relief on their minds, kids in Dallas squeeze the aid from lemons a lemonade fundraiser for Japan. In an hour, they raised more than $1,000. From Haiti, Joseph and Jeffrey look at Japan and see themselves. Their 14-year-olds still living in tents after last year's earthquake. For me, it's not, it's not easy. It's good. In their despair, they link to Japan with plastic scraps made into bracelets. $10 a piece, $200 so far. Moved, like all these kids, to send hope in whatever way they can. Some people saw me on TV and invited me to Toronto to meet Blue Jay. I like this city. We work everywhere. It's different from Haiti. No earthquakes, no riots, no cholera.
miss my mom, but I got to call her on the phone at the game. Salut to Union Melody. Salut to Union Netakala. Salut Baba Melody, to Tim Union Net. Salut to Paya Fred. Je suis là en ville. Je suis en ville. Je suis en My father called me and said, Joseph, your, father, your mother has cholera. You don't think what we can do if you have a friend to have a car to bring her to the hospital? And I said, no. Then they take a motorcycle. Then they go with her. And tomorrow morning, I go to see her. She was very good. Then. She's, she worked very hard for us. And she was loved us very much. She will stay in my heart forever. We will fight for the right of poor people, fight for the right, fight to change this unjust system. I'm not afraid. We said in Haiti, victoire c'est pour peuple. The victory is for poor, is it for, for the people. We believe in that. All the time, the, the people in Haiti has the, the victory. We got a victory in 1803, and a huge, a big army from France, the Napoleon army, we got the victory. 
We defeat a lot of dictatorship like Duvalier. I think the victory is on our side. But we need to keep going and make the struggle and make the fight. I'm really confident we'll win this process. And, and then, not only for Haiti, not for Haiti, this will be for the for the poor country. It's a fight of the world. I'm walking around the country on the poor area and looking to the people who have been infected or, or been killed or have the disease of cholera. I'm keeping working until I find the last victims of cholera. seen my story, please help me end cholera and Haiti. Let's tell the UN they must end this crisis. Bonjour, I am Mario Joseph, managing attorney at the Bureau des Avocats Internationaux. I would like to thank you for coming to watch baseball in the time of cholera. Cholera keeps killing. Expert said it will be between two and 4,000 Haitian this year. It will kill children like Joseph and his friend. I will invite you to take the next step of helping us stop the cholera epidemic in my country. We are a team of public interest lawyers in Haiti and in the United States. The cholera case is our biggest case right now. We also represent victims of rape and political persecution and justly imprisoned. Our clients almost always poor and we do not charge them nothing, anything for our work. We depend on donations from our supporters to keep fighting. We keep our costs very low by working hard for modest salaries and getting lots of volunteer help. But we do need money to keep our office open, to travel to the remote area where our cholera clients live and to document the cases. 
The cholera case is particularly expensive because we represent 5,000 uh, clients so far. Even modest fees for authorizing documents and add up quickly when multiplied by 5,000. The cholera case has the potential to transform the lives of all poor Haitians by forcing the United Nations to provide clean water, which will control cholera and other infectious diseases. We can stop cholera's killing, but we need your help, and we need, we need it now. Please consider a generous donation to IJDH. Thank you for caring about Haiti. Thank you.